Alright, welcome back to our treason run on Terra Invicta, everyone. And the game begins with just proof that the servants are indeed easy mode, as I have been saying. Um, it seems like the aliens have just enthralled the remaining control point in Russia, which is the one that gives a bonus to crack down, detain, and assassinate, i.e. the thing that could have allowed the initiative to break us out of Russia. Um, well, they've just handed that over to us. Uh, we're now over CP cap, so I'll have to manage that as best I can. Uh, looks like I do have some spare points around the place that I was either not aware of. So, for example, uh, Romania we can abandon. Bring that down just a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to have to police the control points a little bit. Um, and I might even be able to quickly, using the relations menu, make sure... No, actually, I won't need to do anything there. So I can probably safely abandon the executive command point in Ukraine, assuming I'm going to require American intervention anyway. That'll save me seven. But I'm, I'm playing a bit seriously for one where, really, we should be in a position to win relatively quickly. My goal for this episode is to establish like a crunch hold on space, race up the tech tree, and be in a position to assist our alien benefactors when they arrive. Um, and that's the reason that I haven't destroyed... Everyone's like, why haven't you destroyed the Earth or whatever? No, because I need the research to push our objectives technologies in order to get us to the place we need to be in order to actually win. If we aren't involved in the alien victory, then it's actually a defeat for the servants. You do need to be far enough along your mission and tech tree in order for it to count as a win. So a couple of things are going to happen. I'm going to solve the CP cap issue. I'm going to finish building uh, mission control in places like Israel. My country goal for takeover next is actually North Korea. Uh, this is next on my list because I want this. Uh, North Korea would be great. Um, otherwise, if I can make the CP cap, Pakistan is even better. And then whatever country I take over there, it uh, is going to just do 100% nuclear weapon production which is something I would never do in any other playthrough, but there we are. In terms of the moon, we're building a mine at Stonehenge Base. This will be completed in about a month, month and a bit. This will uh, solve our negative volatile problem, so we'll go positive on volatile again. Our boost income will increase. We can complete our third base on the moon, which is the one that's going to get us our noble metal income. So then we'll have income in three categories, uh, sorry, four categories net positive. Only in fissiles will we not have positive income, but all that means is we have to boost the first um, fission piles to Mars. That's fine. We'll mine our fissiles on Mars. There's this huge amount of fissiles on the moon, um, but it wasn't one of my priorities. It was more important to get nobles. You use more nobles in constructions than you do fissiles. So we'll get this later using marines uh, when it's at the screw humanity out of any chance to resist the alien stage. So that's the plan. Let's go. So of course, as the servants, we want to show the aliens that humanity is something special, that we are more than what they think we are, that we are not the dangerous aggressive species uh, that they need to aggressively control. Which is why um, we've decided to put our foot forward um, with North Korea as our representative nation, putting 100% of its GDP into nuclear weapons, so that the aliens, when they come to our planet and see what humanity is capable of, uh, they see a backwards, impoverished nation spending all of its scarce resources on weapons designed to destroy cities. That'll convince them. But hey, the people are very, very convinced. Uh, so we'll fortify this position, take it over, um, and then we'll see... In the course of maybe a bit less than a year, we'll get our second nuclear weapon in North Korea. We might even get a third. Uh, if not, in an emergency, direct investment can get there, but you're not likely to have the money early on to do much in the way of direct investment. I have gained, in this mission phase, like six control points from alien enthrallment. It is something ridiculous. The last one I'll actually keep, Azerbaijan, because that might actually speed up the process of expanding Russia just a bit. Russia is obviously expanding with the help of its famous historical ally, the United States. Uh, we've got the cohesion back up, um, and it is still improving. Democracy, eh, uh, we're stabilizing the... We're going to stabilize the inequality rate while holding uni uh, unity high because, again, the main thing is not to, under any circumstances, lose Russia. So we might even have to turn on some spoils eventually, but if I can bring inequality down, keep popularity at a, you know, 
very reasonable and normal 95%, then we should be in a good place to keep it stable. Um, we expand it, we get as much territory as possible. North Korea is happily churning away its nuclear weapons. And then with CP consolidation under the way, um, I'm thinking of starting to consolidate more countries for the benefit of the emissaries who we still haven't found yet and can't even have a phone call with. Uh, so the Baltic states and bits of uh, bits of the Baltic, probably Finland, uh, the Caucasus, Central Asia, these are all on the agenda because the more we can occupy now, the less we have to destroy, I mean, the less we have to peacefully hand over later. All right, we might have a hit. You see there are some um, abductions going on in this particular part of Russia. We're very jealous of the people who are being abducted. Uh, we're very needy, so we would like to talk to the people doing the abductions, and I'm pretty sure it's this high security counselor that happens to be right nearby. So I'm sending in good old Cashy Bland, who hasn't quite celebrated his 21st birthday, to go in with an investigate mission, 76% chance to find uh, out who that is, and if it is indeed one of the emissaries, then we will contact it next turn. Meanwhile, the US military is rolling into Turkmenistan, and uh, good old Floris Bronzewater here should consolidate control of Azerbaijan to secure its integration. The Baltics, I'm pretty sure we need to wait for executive consolidation before we could remove them from the European Union, but I figured with a little bit of boost income and MC, they're a nice one to pick up in the short term. After all, we're now stockpiling for our move towards Mars. The one volatile site on the moon was not enough to send us positive. That's, uh, that's a bit of a drawback. But we do have water. We're going to have water. We're going to have metal. We're going to have nobles. So we're only going to be paying the volatiles uh, cost. We're even slightly negative on fissiles, which is kind of okay. Um, so awesome. Rolling into Turkmenistan. Uh, nice, healthy um, diversity of opinion in Russia, of course. Uh, the United States is still a little bit more diverse. Only 70% of Americans think surrendering, uh, sorry, worshipping the aliens is a good thing. 5% want to surrender but not worship. And 17% are in the cooperate column. So America is in uh, a grand total of 1% resistance or humanity first. So, yeah. Um, once this is down and we're really sure the US can't be taken away from us, I'm going to swap over to a mostly military-based build because the stronger the US military, the better it's going to be for, you know, spreading the word of the... I don't know. This is, we're going to beat people up who try and fight the aliens, okay? that That's basically what we're going to do. All right, fantastic. And I, dis I disagree with this tooltip. It says direct sighting the aliens. No, no, no. Remember, we're the servants. They're the emissaries. All right, let's send a diplomat in to have a have a chat, shall we? Make in contact. I have returned. Oh, great! So we actually sent our faction leader. Amazing. I know she said she was going to do that, but that seems brave. The experience was hard to describe. Being in their presence was very different to my visions. I gained no enlightenment, saw no great truth. What I felt instead was an overpowering sense of sympathy, of identification. I was constantly alert to the smallest movements and signals from the emissaries, and when they paused or deliberated, I felt terrible fear that I had offended or failed them in some way. You're getting mind controlled. When they gave an order, I jumped eagerly to obey. There was no hesitation, no questioning. It was a single-minded purpose of a trained soldier or of a mother with her child. Once I left their presence, I withdrew to meditate. I could feel the urge to carry out their orders, to follow every direction. Yeah, because you're mind-controlled. But another part of me understood that I needed to recenter myself. Gradually, as if from a dream, I awoke. The loyalty, the devotion, all of those stayed. But I could think clearly again. The reactions of others who accompanied me are more varied. Some are still attempting to fulfill every last order they were given, no matter how trivial. Once they have completed their instructions, they stare vacantly until prompted. That, that's what we... So that's the behavior we expect from ferrocytes. What's going on with you, Judith? Other, others, though, seem to retain more of their sense of self. I believe that the alien influence acts as a test of sorts. Some have their minds overwhelmed with the desire to serve, but those who already loved the emissaries, who are already devoted to them, can retain their own identity, since for them there is no conflict. I would like to rest, but there is too much to do. First and foremost, we must come to learn the language of the emissaries so we may better serve. So what you're telling me is she goes in, she gets mind-controlled, 
but because she's so like in love with the the Hydra that there's no crushing conflict between the ferrocyte directive and what she wants to do anyway and her brain comes up with the idea that she doesn't have to follow the instructions because she can do better but because doing better is still completely in service to the aliens the compulsion what i'm reading here is that she is so fanatically pro hydra that the mind control doesn't work as intended because she thinks that she can... The direct, the core directive is help the Hydra. The secondary directive is go do mission X. But because what she wants to do is in keeping with the core directive and she thinks is better than the secondary directive, she gets to ignore the hell out of... That or her experience with mind-altering drugs makes her more resistant to ferrocytes. Who knows? But apparently we are now, like, part mind-controlled. Meeting with the Emissary has taken a great weight off my mind. Yeah, because you got doused in ferrocytes. I had been prepared to make a sacrifice. Now that I know this from the theory as well. Learn the Hydra language. Okay, we've got to learn the Hydra language. Okay, we can do that. Um, he's abducting people. Xenoform Alpha 3 is abducting people in Georgia. That's fine. We'll take Georgia over. Um, do we want... We, we can't learn their language yet. When we can learn their language, we'll learn their language. Uh, do I want Solid Core Fission 2? Probably. I don't want any of this stuff yet. Ah, uh, lithium, lithium heat sinks are, are the heat sink that I use. Do I really need them, though? Like, they're really, really good. Look, I may as well. So we're doing lithium heat sinks and patrol vessels. We're getting closer towards being able to militarize space. Uh, tier 2 orbitals, mission to the inner planet. We'll need to do tier 2 bases as well. Uh, just to get science moving as fast as possible. And then we're going to need an orbital bombardment weapon. And we're going to need marines. Because we need to start messing up other people's space presence. Uh, look, without us patrolling to make sure that Xenoflora doesn't take over or anywhere in the world. Uh, we've got our first megafauna here in uh, Chile. Uh, walking over towards, uh, is that moving towards Buenos Aires? Yep, okay, so Argentina is go and Humanity First are going to soon be introduced to some megafauna. Uh, and we're going to do nothing about it, because the emissaries clearly want this to happen, so we'll just, you know, we'll leave it be. Uh, we've got some xeno forming happening in Russia as well, but the emissaries wouldn't want us to interfere, so, you know, we'll just, we'll just leave that be. All right, I'm trying to take over Uzbekistan. Also, we've started setting up a couple of bases on Mars. Um, we should have, I think, three under construction. Other factions have also sent a whole bunch of bases to Mars. So Initiative, Exodus, Resistance, and Academy are all here on Mars. Uh, if I look at my bases, I think I've got mines constructing in two out of the three. Let's just check when we will meet the requirements to build another one. This says 5.9 boost, so a month or so, extra resources, we should be able to drop this one as well. And once these all come online in 2026, our space resources should be fine. We should be able to roll things over and start thinking about Earth orbitals, which is what we really want. We need some Tier 2 Earth orbitals with some labs that boost the critical technologies. In particular, I want some Xenoscience uh, to make sure that I can keep detecting and thus keep track of our beloved uh, Xenos, I mean emissaries. Um, and Hydra language has popped, so I am researching Hydra language, which is why a Xenology bonus would be really, really handy. Um, so that'll finish in November 26. And I've got alien technology on the roll as well, slowly, because there's nothing else I really want to prioritize right now. Orbitals, mission to the inner planets, these things are getting priority, uh, as they should. This way we should have orbitals and settlements before the probes arrive at Mercury. Now, if you want proof that humans just sometimes will not believe what they should, will not see the obvious truth in front of them, apparently some of the other factions have started to decide that I'm a little bit annoying. So I've decided to convince them with a charm campaign, and I have no idea so far why my campaign of ruthlessly invading countries to expand my control, uh, instituting thought crime in the expanding Eurasian Union, um, Turning American military spending to 50% of the overall budget, because, you know, that's necessary. And also doing things like 100% uh, investment in nuclear weapons in Israel. That is, every economic effort in Israel that is not required, strictly speaking, to keep the population alive is being directed to the production of nuclear weapons. Um, 
just imagine like welders, tradesmen will make bomb casings, university students will be conscripted to work in refining uh, radioisotopes and refining production. Um, it's, it's an interesting thing, the entirety of the state directed towards nothing more than producing as many nuclear weapons as possible. So Israel has two going on three, uh, and the DPRK has two also should be going on three uh, in early 2026. That's five nice little uh, nukes there. And then once we finish expanding Russia, we're going to want Pakistan most likely get these two nukes and some investment points to build some more. The more nukes that we can get under our control, the better. Uh, in an ideal world, what I'd want to do is take over control of something like the European Union or the United Kingdom, because that's just going to make this whole process a little less painful for humanity, if you know what I mean. Anyway, our space presence continues to expand. Our research is sort of going to stagnate now until we are able to get space-based research going, but I've finished orbital tech, I'm working on settlement tech, and that'll start letting us move along. I will need, I believe, directed space research. Which will mean space research, so augmented reality space research. We need to pick these up soon, otherwise the, the inf so we're building the infrastructure first because that's got a lead time to send the facilities out, but we're going to want the actual research labs and facilities going as well. Uh, directed space, re so I'm going to start focusing on the research tree to make sure that we can make the most out of the tier 2 infrastructure when it comes up. Industrialization is almost finished. This is our construction modules, and that's fantastic because that's what we need to send to the inner planets. I'm doing Mars the old-fashioned way, like one-year build times, uh, but Mercury we're going to do with the help of a construction module. Here we've got an arcane me uh, arctic methane eruption, Sorry, which means that the Earth's climate is going to be in worse shape, but that's okay. I'm sure I'm going to be able to cool things down later. So really not a serious problem. May as well get some scientific research out of it. The process of expanding Russia continues. As you can see, we've got a lot of the old Soviet Union gang back together already into the sweet pro-alien embrace of our 10 cohesion alien loving super state. Well, not super state, unless you want to call the Soviet Union a super state, but we're bringing it back bit by bit. Uh, Belarus will be next. I'm not sure I want to divert any research towards the great nation's technologies. It might be a good call as I run out of space-based technology that I need, but for the moment it is space-based and objective-based technologies that I am pushing for to make sure I'm in the best situation I can. Mission to the Inner Planets is about to finish. I have high-speed probes, so that'll launch and I'll also get, as soon as I can, uh, an orbital and as soon as construction module pops, I'll complete that. I've been waiting a while for it to unlock, which is annoying. Um, but yeah, a, uh, a station with a construction module on its way to Mercury sounds like a great idea. Okay, we have completed the I Hear Voices station in orbit. Um, I haven't finished Tier 2 solar arrays, unfortunately, so this is going to be a bit, bit of an inefficient build. But basically what I want to do, because a lot of my objectives technologies are based on xenology research. I need how many of these in order to build up my maximum plus nine? I need nine of them. So if I go solar collector, solar collector, xenology, xenology, that's six. I'm going to get to eight, which is pretty good. What I would also like is the social science labs, but that's hard to do efficiently with tier one technology. So this should give us a whole bunch of bonus on xenology research and a bonus to our scans to find aliens. So we should be able to push things like Hydra language and alien technology and all that sort of stuff that we need for our objective, push that just a significant amount faster. No station, no research type in terms of lab, gives a faster acceleration than Xenology. Every other category, it's like 2.5%. Xenology, it's 10%. It's a fantastic deal. So I Hear Voices Station is now operational. We're saving up some boost. It'll take us about 36 in order to send a station and a construction module to Mercury. So we should be ready to go with that relatively soon. Uh, we are researching construction modules. The timing is going to be pretty decent. We're only controlling one research for the moment, but we will push this one towards the space-based research technologies. Arrival IR is okay for us. Mission to the asteroids, yeah, it's also okay. It might mean the AI goes to Ceres, which could be useful for them, but I still think we should be able to strangle their space economy if we move relatively quickly. There we go. So apparently um, 
Lucas Schenker was uh, not getting with the program of loving the aliens, and so was sticking with humanity first and the idea of actually defending Earth. Uh, so we're going to invade him and bring him back into Russia so that he too can join the alien-loving crusade. I've also now started pumping public opinion in the European Union, because if I can bring the European Union on board, there's a whole bunch of countries that I could convince, using the might of the US military, that pro-alien policies are best. Brussels working for the aliens is a sickening concept, but, you know, that's what we kind of signed up for with this playthrough. There is a probe on the way to Ceres, and I am getting towards the point where I'm going to have enough boost to go to Mercury. Cash, you are no max, but, um, nice job, kid. Okay, we now have Learn Their Language. We've completed the Learn Their Language objective. Learning the language of the Hydras, for, the, for so the emissaries are called, has been an interesting process. The audible components are simple enough to come to recognize. Reproducing them with the aid of mechanical devices is also straightforward. However, truly understanding their language requires us to stand in their presence. Their aura envelops us, providing emotion, connection, purpose, mind-controlling effects, and the complete supplantion of our will. I may have added those bits because this is stupid. Without it, their language is a pale shadow of itself, limited and clumsy. Unfortunately, it seems that we will never be able to share the emissary's aura. We can understand their words, but we can never reproduce them. We will be children born without the gift of speech, forever spectators, never able to fully participate in their exchanges. It will be our curse. Yet perhaps in it we may find insight. The vow of silence is an ancient one. Okay, um, or you could do what the other factions do and eventually learn how to replicate ferrocytes. But, okay, whatever, your, your brain is still probably fragged from the time that you got control. Anyway, um, now is the time to be cautious. So many human leaders have taken the power to communicate, to share thoughts and ideas, and used it for selfish purposes. We must approach the Hydras in humility, listening first and foremost, and only speaking after much thought, if at all. Our purpose is to teach them, yet we must never forget that they are far wiser than we are. And I base this assertion on jack and shit. Okay, research Hydra diplomacy when it becomes available. Okay, um, well, there's a whole bunch of technologies that would be useful for me to pick up at this point. Um, solid core fission, nervous, like starting to get towards our first ship is probably handy. I think alien technology is necessary eventually. Um, restore Warsaw Pact would be useful if we can't take over the EU, but I think we can take over the EU. Um, I might grab... Just to take advantage of this plus 91% bonus, until Hydra Diplomacy unlocks, make technology advan um, gains on alien technology and swap this to alien diplomacy when it becomes available. Settlement cores are being well researched, and let's see if, indeed we can, we can send a platform to Mercury orbit, and in this location we can put a construction module, which will be built in 180 days, and we will need a solar collector built in 125 days. Great, so in 180 days time, roughly, I think, or a little bit longer if it takes a while for the settlement core to complete, uh, we should be ready to go in Mercury, which is pretty cool. <sighs> Unfortunately, we're going to hand it all over to the Hydra, I, I think, but, you know, it'll be impressive human achievements while they last. Anyway, 50% of you population now thinks the servants are also, and this is what happens when you throw all five of your counselors at one problem. The AI struggles a little bit because they don't know to bring all of their five counselors back to cancel uh, to counter you. In any case, um, maybe the Hydra will even come in and help us out. We'll see. Meanwhile, this second station in Earth orbit has got nine social science labs which should massively increase the result of our public campaigns, making it much easier for us to turn populations to our cause. We are going to absolutely saturate Earth in cable news that tells everyone how amazing the Hydra are and how it is foolish to do anything other than get into a committed subservient relationship with them in the hopes that it will improve their overall behavioral characteristics. We can fix them. Okay, European Union, let's take it over. 
Oh, here we are. Here are cults worshipping aliens, which I kind of thought was our deal. So apparently, we could either let them be, which would increase our public opinion, or we could get an orc. And I'm kind of interested. Uh, what is this orc? The Silver Seekers. That looks like a persuasion orc. So let's find our evangelists and equip them. There we are. That'll give her a significant boost. And I think there's another persuasion... Oh, there it is. There we are, that should make her all the more impressive. She's not one of the people we're building towards command, whereas a lot of these other counsellors we are building towards command slowly. I'm hoping there's some admin orgs come along which let us update Floris. Uh, Basil Jahid is up to 13 command, 9 command for cash. Uh, cash, there you go, more command for you, cash. Vega Marketing, that looks interesting. You can probably use Vega Marketing. What's the least useful organization that you currently have equipped? Probably this one. So let's equip Vega Marketing. And hopefully with our new public relations social science stations, we should be able to take over the EU more efficiently. The Academy and others are fighting back. We're down to 4.2 unrest and 47% popularity, but that's because we've diverted councillors to other things. I'm pretty sure if I put all five back on, we should be able to crack Europe in the next couple of months, I'm hoping. All right, we have arrived on Mercury, started establishing our HABs. A uh, number of locations are already establishing themselves, complete with mines. We have an orbital station. This will eventually be a research output at the post, but for the moment, a little more mining output, and then more interface bonuses on Earth, I think. I've got the mission control bonuses, the social bonuses, and the xenology bonuses all firing up around Earth. And I think the other ones we're going to need are at the very least the plus Miltech ones. The wrestling for the European Union is driving me nuts, but we are steadily making ground, and I'm getting close to the point where with a few more levels, it'll be time to start throwing cash into the equation to see if we can purge or coup our way into power. I know it looks like I have a lot of CP filled, but trust me, that's a lot of garbage control points around the planet that the Hydra keep enthralling for me that I have to keep abandoning whenever I go over again. So we will have some capacity free when it's EU time. All right, I've completed Hydra Diplomacy, which means we have the joy of hearing more from Judith, no doubt. Take me there. We've completed the Learn to Serve objective. We have now set up reliable communication channels with the emissaries. We will be able to speak with them on a regular basis going forwards. The emissaries have indicated they have two tasks for us. The first involves establishing military control over Earth. Something is far more ambitious. The creation of a new nation, something never seen before. Prepare the alien nation. The place of the emissaries is to rule, ours is to serve. There is no shame in this. It is natural for the lesser to serve the greater, but the lesser can have lessons to teach as well. We are a younger race than the Hydra, and it is our place to watch and learn. Perhaps in time we will come to see what it is we can offer in return. You know, you've got a lot of uncertainty and guesswork going on here, Judith, uh, and on that basis you appear to be willing to sign over the entire species into slavery because your plan might be able to teach the Hydra to be a little nicer later. A bit of a gamble, but, you know, your brain is ferrocited. So we're going to learn their purpose. For the longest time, one question has nagged at me. What happened to the emissaries? Something wounded them. Wounded them so terribly that they have never recovered. But we have no way to find out what it was until now. Our meeting with the Hydras have begun to give me clues. Not in what they say, but what in, what is in left unsaid. For all their power and wisdom, the emissaries are limited. Their mastery of inert, inert matter is beyond equal, unless you count humanity by about 2040 in my standard TI game. Their ability to command and direct other creatures is equally impressive. But these are technical things. Where are the artists, the philosophers, spiritual leaders? The obvious conclusion is that they are somewhere else among the stars. But the more I listen, the less I feel this is the answer. There is a void in the Hydras, an absence. Perhaps this is a hole we are meant to fill. Wait, so you're saying we're going to be their arts grads? complete research their demands when it becomes available. Okay, so we've got alienation and research their demands coming available soon, but I guess this may as well do something useful in the meantime. Um, devolve Space Command. Let's 
let's continue with alien technology because I always want a xenology slot going. We can probably keep it. No, I'll keep it at three star burn. Um, and otherwise working on unity movements, sorry, and militarization of space because this is where the Marines are. I'm also researching operation centers because um, we have no MC cap. Aliens aren't going to get pissed at us. So uh, building some MC around Mercury, kind of handy. Uh, the Eurasian Union is now basically 100% uh, producing um, mission control. It's 94% focus. Uh, the United States, we probably will pull onto... Welfare is now no longer necessary. So let's go over to 17% mission control, get a little bit there. Uh, but we'll get a little bit of MC everywhere we go. In terms of preparing for the emissary's arrival, uh, Israel now has six nuclear barrages and North Korea has four. This is a good thing for humanity somehow. All right, there we go, toing and froing, and Europe is finally broken. Welcome to servant rule. The key now, of course, is to bring the country fully under control. Uh, that means a little bit of spoils right for the moment, just until we can bring unrest down and are thus coup vulnerable. Uh, we probably need to defend our interests to make sure we aren't immediately thrown out. Uh, bringing down the unrest is a matter of urgency, and once unrest starts down and we are fortified in place, we remove the spoils, we bring the inequality down, to further stabilize the country. And then we probably just pump mission control because that's going to be what supports our space presence uh, just as always. Then I think we're getting pretty close to... Oh, that's hard to research. Okay, in a couple of days, we'll finish the alienation. Okay, we are. There is only one path to ascension, and that is our willing submission to the emissaries. This has proven to be a bitter pill for even some of our own to swallow, accustomed as we humans are to organizing and governing ourselves. Attaining a consensus that we must become a glorious new nation with one vision, one purpose, one people, ruled over with all-seeing, all-knowing beneficence by the emissaries was the first and foremost obstacle to its founding, but it was also a vital lesson. While we have, fortunately, now achieved a unity of purpose amongst ourselves, this is not a battle we can fight continually. Fortunately, we have devised a permanent solution, a facility which will enable the emissaries to control the very hearts and minds of those who doubt them. So we're going to build mind control centers. We have been assured the emissaries will share with us the fruits of its nation that they have no need for. Its scientific and space programs will serve us directly. Allow us to transfer territory to the alien nation, increases CP cap by 25. Our work has spun off a new organization, the Alien Administration Transition Team. Okay. Or some pro-alien propaganda. The alien nation will be something altogether new. Though the emissary's powers, or through the emissary's powers, much of the traps and dangers of human government can be avoided, there is no need for elaborate checks and balances to guard against the risk of officials ab uh, abusing their power, because the people in power will be mind-controlling alien organisms who regard us as chattel. The emissaries will ensure the administrators of our nation faithfully carry out their duties. Crime and social disturbance can be dealt with without prisons or violence. Again, because of the mind control thing. The nation will be more stable, more peaceful, and more efficient than any in human history. The heart of the alien nation will be the control facility. We now have its design, and we can begin its construction at any time. Once it has been completed, we can arrange for the emissaries to take up residence there and transfer control of its higher-level functions to them, though much of the administration will still fall to us. Okay... Uh, so we can apparently do that. I'll look at that org. Um, I don't see a reason to wait for an assault carrier to land. I think we can just go ahead. Is that an admin org? Fantastic. So we'll give an admin org there and give the alien administration team there. Awesome. Uh, and what else do you need, need Floris? Because you're basically just a person who hangs on to orgs for us rather than anything significant. Yeah, that's handy. All right. So we can build facility, apparently. Well, all right, well, I'll wait for the new turn, then we'll build a facility. My thinking is that we should hand over countries that we're not immediately interested in and establish the alien nation there. I'm considering maybe Panama. Nice place to establish the alien nation. Um, 
we won't hand over our best territory until later on because we need that territory to facilitate the Grand Conquest. So I'm thinking of starting the Alien Nation probably either in Central America or even Africa. Africa might be a good place to kick it off. Um, I'm sure I have some CP somewhere. If not, taking over an African nation should be pretty simple. Uh, and that will allow us to expand it over land in a lot of different directions without it immediately wanting to gobble up our territory. I don't know how it's going to respond, but you know, it is what it is. So uh, this is it, treason of the highest order. Uh, we still have to learn their purpose by researching their demands. So let's do that. Let's research their demands. That'll be finished in September, but we'll get the alien organization founded before then, getting this whole run one step closer to its icky conclusion. All right, so I'm back after a little bit of a break because it's hard to record Servant, Terror, and Victor in one long session, unlike the Humanity First and Academy runs, and I've realized a number of fundamental truths at the exact same time as the line from Hamilton goes. The first is more people have continued to tell me that on Brutal, if you're playing the Servants, the aliens are actually nerfed, not boosted. And so I checked it out, and sure enough... The aliens at this stage are freaking pathetic. Um, like surveillance destroyers are coming towards Earth for like the first time in 2027. Like it's kind of pathetic. The build-up of bases, like it's like paying, playing on casual for an ordinary faction. At the same time, I've noticed that the other human factions are expanding quicker and more efficiently and more effectively than normal. They're picking good locations, they're building mining sites. Um, they're expanding pretty bloody well, the same way I would expect if they were getting boosted or they were being, getting smarter. They're in the asteroid belt, they're, um, well, they're everywhere, frankly. Um, do I want to put a base on Ceres? I don't think so. I think I want to put bases around Mercury. Um, so, trusting Standing the... By. Uh, Xenos to come and occupy Earth and establish an alien administration is probably not on the cards. And if we want to do this, um, we have to do this ourselves, which kind of like goes against the idea that they are all powerful and all capable if we're going to have to do it all ourselves. The second thing I have realized is that in order to do it, we need to set up alien facilities. And right. that means... In order to establish an alien facility in a country, you need to control all of its control points and there needs to have been enough abductions in the country, which means we can actually do the abduction mission, which gathers humans for alien ferrocyte control. And we have to actually do that. Um, so you, you, guys, you guys made me do this. Um, so we're going to do this in Iran, and we're going to try and take all the control points for Iran, because I've decided, after much uh, consideration, that Iran is where I'm going to set up the alien nation. It starts with an army, it starts with... Um, it's another nuclear weapons country that we can take off the board that we couldn't easily expand to otherwise, and it puts us near some of our near-term objectives, so maybe expanding it into Pakistan or whatnot would be a good idea. Taking Pakistan is possible and would in some ways be a better idea because it's got two armies and nukes, um, but I feel like I need a little bit of time in order to pull that off, so we're going to leave that for the moment. It's also humanity first stronghold, whereas Iran, a little more mixed, so we're going to start there. The final fundamental truth I've realized is that since we're going to be doing most of this ourselves, there's a reasonable case for the idea that we might be able to limit the devastation. If we can take over many countries ourselves peacefully, combine them, um, we might be able to do this quickly, but at the same time keep at least the collateral damage lower than I feared it might be. We still do have the six Israeli nukes and the four uh, North Korean nuclear barrages, which may be useful um, if we're talking about some of these countries. But with Europe slowly being brought under control, we can start expanding the European Union, which will make it a lot easier for some of these countries to be combined. Um, I think Germany needs to be a critical, like, near-term objective. If we can break into Germany, absorb it into the European Union, that's a huge win. It allows us to link up with the Czechs and the Slovaks, um, maybe even Poland. Like, you can see what I'm going to do here once I've got the guerrilla war reduced to zero, which is really, really important. Right now, I'm bringing unrest down and unity up. And once that's all leveled out, the European Union will be stabilized and ready to go. Alien nation... Iran, then the Middle East, and then a sweep through Africa, I think. Anyway, um, 
this feels terrible. <laughs> like abduction, xenoforming as a human. Like oh, Judith, explain this to me, please. Let's continue. Everything about that pop-up feels wrong. Scratch that. I have decided that since Pakistan was controlled by humanity first, it was worth the extra effort. So we've thrown the we've thrown a coup at Pakistan. We will now need to control these spots and secure it. I'm also going to run abductions. And Pakistan, with its armies and its nuclear weapons, should be a natural first home for the alien nation. This means the alien nation should start with nukes, which makes it less likely that other countries will declare war on it straight away. And that's going to be critical to minimizing unnecessary collateral damage. There's going to be a lot of collateral damage. We will we will illuminate the non-believers with second sunrises at least a couple of times this playthrough, I expect. But here is the plan. My mission control usage is shooting up because I've started producing mission control stations around Mercury. Normally on Brutal, going over 50 is a death sentence. But, you know, we're the aliens' best buddies, so we're just going to stay as quickly as possible. Uh, we've got the money, including some money from spoils, so we're going to be able to pay for those stations. Space agriculture, tier 3s, all of that might come later. I'm not really pushing research particularly hard on planet Earth. 1.9k per month is not where I would want to be normally, but that's because I'm not pushing knowledge or economic development anywhere. I'm just preparing the US military for the conquest of planet Earth um, and stabilizing countries so we don't get thrown out of them. That's basically all we're doing. I might want to switch the US, like, there we are, just decrease the amount of mission control a little bit, considering that the Eurasian Union is producing most of it, and the European Union should be able to produce quite a bunch once we've got it stabilised. And while we're working on a welcome mat for the aliens, because they are too dumb to build a fleet or assault carriers, or even to level up their mining infrastructure anywhere near as quickly as our other playthroughs, we now have their demands. So let's find out. Now I begin to see, the emissaries were not always as they are now. The great majority of their number were slain by a weapon that struck from space. Those that escaped were the soldiers, the engineers, the technicians. Their society survived, but it was damaged incomplete. All their efforts are now devoted to ensuring that that can never happen again, and in doing so they have abandoned their old path of leadership and guidance. They have lost their way. The emissaries have given us instructions towards building of an orbital weapon system. I feel that it is important to, for us to avoid this. While they would perhaps assist us against the other factions still active on Earth, they would signal to the emissaries that we are like their other subjugated species, resentful slaves that serve only because we are forced to. We must help the emissaries step beyond raw dominance, show them that we serve out of love, not fear. And funnily enough, I'm pretty sure building those orbital platforms is exactly the protectorate mission. So, um... Servants less dumb than protectorate confirmed, I guess. Um, the seat of power is a lonely one. As more and more flock to our cause, my responsibilities have grown. It's no longer enough for me to be our only leader, to be only a leader. I must be a figurehead, a simple... Jeez, it's going to her head quickly. You are one of the few with whom I can still talk freely, so I, perhaps presumptuously, feel that I can understand what troubles the emissaries face. Though they are beyond our understanding, you just said you can understand them. They're not beyond your understanding. Their problems may be the same. When one is alone, it is hard to trust, but trust is the only path by which you can escape what threatens you. We must teach them to have faith in us as we have faith in them. Research the one true path when it becomes available. Okay, uh, I guess we can do that. Let's pick up marine assault units so I can start taking other people's stuff from them at some point. And we're also researching Hydra Direct Support Network, uh, which we done in November, which involves them giving us a bunch of space stuff for free. I feel like my economy is going pretty well, but hey, if the Hydra want to give me free stuff, I'm not going to argue. Advanced Atomic Manipulation, just critical to get that on the way to technology. I don't know why I'm still focused on development. I just feel like if the aliens aren't going to give me any assistance, if I want this run to be done quickly, I still need to develop scale research, space infrastructure, etc. The Hydra, the big baddies, um, we're just going to do it all for them, basically. And maybe that will teach them true devotion, because if we were just handing the planet over to them after they were already invading, maybe we were doing it out of fear. But if we just surrender while they have no ability to enforce their will on us, maybe they'll take that some way. I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it, Judas plan is Judas plan. Let's take over Pakistan. 
Now, it may just be in my head, but humanity first are being right pricks in terms of trying to do exactly what they're meant to do and blocking me. So they've come back into Pakistan to prevent the full control I need in order to establish an alien facility. So the US has actually declared war on Pakistan. I control the nukes after all. The US army will install a three level servant government in Islamabad and hopefully we can go from there. Development around Mercury is continuing apace. Lots of excellent construction taking place. Um, and we're in a good place. The Hydra support network has increased our incomes, I believe, which is handy. That or our mines are coming online. We've almost finished the complete, as you can see, colonization of Mercury. The current structure for tier two bases, pretty simple. We don't have farms yet, which is a problem, but we will get them eventually. For the moment, I'm just doing something like this, outpost mining complex, and then a whole bunch of operation centers, trusting to spoils and whatnot on planet Earth to keep these op centers funded while we expand in space. We've now got a good number of op centers in construction. The next stage is going to be research and of course the military buildings uh, and structures, including the marine transports needed to start taking away other people's critical stations on the moon and on Mars. All right, thank you very much, Welcome US military. Humanity first tried to defend the capital with an army. Uh, they stood their ground to the absolute end like heroes. Uh, the second army, the first, second strike corps under our control, uh, sat in the south doing nothing because, well, I'm not sure what they'd tell their troops uh, about why they were doing nothing while the Americans were installing a new government. And also, why is the new government basically the same as the old government? These are the questions people might be asking, but for the moment, let's send the Americans home and see how close we are to getting a base constructed. We've just had a hostile Xeno Mega Xenofauna thing spawn in Vladivostok, but because I think it likes us, it's just going to go walk into Manchuria instead. So, you know, good on it. Um, I'm starting to get a little frustrated. I understand why the aliens would be no fun to play, because I need to continuously abduct. I'm abducting all the time in Islamabad, and I still don't have enough in order to build a base, but I'm working on it. I'm also uh, having France invade Germany to bring it into the European Union, the, the megastate, and we'll continue expanding. The Benelux is next. This is all just to um, ease the transition over to alien administration. Um, I've also researched the Pulsar Drive, so we should be able to get some marine transports ready. I'm building the shipyards now, so life should be good. Let's pick up the Hydroponics Bay, uh, then Solid Core Fission Reactor 3, um, and start taking all hope away from our fellow humans by taking away all their space infrastructure. <sighs> Now, in this bizarre alternative reality, and I'm going to wind this up soon, the European Union as a federation isn't really anymore. The European Union I run is expanding, but there's a federation called Czechoslovakia, which includes the Czech Republic and Slovakia, Spain, Portugal, Hungary, Romania, the Northern Balkans, the Alpine states, and thankfully not Italy or the Southern Balkans, and I'm pretty sure not the UK. So here's what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to declare war on the Czechs as the European Union after I remove as many allies as possible, which I think I have now done. Then, hopefully, that brings the whole Federation in and the US military can just romp across Europe, consolidating all of these nations into our beautiful alien-loving state. I've also started producing... Um, a number of frigates which I will show you when they are produced. I'm building up the mission control necessary to run them. In fact, I may even go produce another mission control station on Mercury just to get it in the queue and so no one else is allowed to land on my precious, precious Mercury. Outpost mining complex, solar, solar, ops, 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 ops. This is not a good tactic for anyone that isn't the servants, but for the servants, this is fine. We're at 70 mission control. Aliens still love us. Not that they could do anything about it anyway, because their fleet strength is still garbage. Uh, and abductions in Islamabad yet again. And here we are, increasing our CP cap by 100 by researching the one true path, which is probably where I'm going to end this episode as I fight with the abduction mechanic in order to get the alienation established. Perhaps we cannot ever hope to be the emissary's equal. Humanity deserves to be more to them than chattel, however. If granted greater freedoms, we could better aid them in their cause and achieve greatness together. In order to convince them of this, we have to use our ever-growing understanding of their language and culture to request an opportunity to prove our unfailing loyalty once and for all. 
our work has spun off a new organization, the Sword of the Devoted. The negotiated decisions have been difficult. The Hydras are not accustomed to their servants expressing disagreement, even of the mildest kind, and I believe I was very close to being killed and discarded. Fortunately for me, and unfortunately for the world, there are some Hydras who offered a contrasting viewpoint, and I believe that it was only our military victories and the loyalty we have displayed in our battles, mainly the fact that we're taking over the bloody planet without them doing anything. <sighs> okay. That swayed them this far. For this, as with many other things, I am in your debt. In the end, after much discussion, the Hydras have agreed to offer us a chance. Should we prove beyond a doubt that the majority of our species is willing to serve them faithfully, they will agree to view us, at least on a trial basis, as servants and not as slaves. To do this, we must be victorious both on land and in space. The alien nation must grow to encompass a clear majority of the humans on Earth, and our fleet's power, in combination with our allies, must be clearly superior to all those who might oppose us. If we can fulfill these conditions, the emissaries will waive their demands for the establishment of the orbital weapon system. This is the greatest challenge we have ever faced, and it is a challenge not just for us, but for all of humanity. Should we fail, we will become as the salamanders or griffins, slaves and shock troops to be used as expendable pawns, but should we succeed, it will be the first step towards something more. It has been a long road. No, it hasn't. It's March 2028. Most humans, even most Hydras, did not believe, but we have done it. On land and in space, our numbers have swollen beyond counting. We are the Hydras of Hydra of legend, ever-growing and legion. Hail Hydra. Travel to the United Nations and bring the joyful news. Proclaim the new order. Let it all. Let all know that a new world has come. So, have a counselor aside, the Sword of the Devoted Org target the New York region with the Herald, our master's mission. Two things need to happen. The aliens must control regions totaling 65% of the Earth's population. Current value, zero. The combined fleet power of the aliens and pro-alien factions must be at least 80% of the total fleet power in the solar system. Currently, 100%. So we just, we need to found the alien nation is basically what we need to do. Uh, there is no avoiding it, uh, but we're working on it as quickly as possible. Do I need, I might eventually need Europa Ascendant, to be perfectly honest. Um, I will pick up alien technology in case it is useful. So we'll do something like that. Keep going with the global technology and push this at the same time. Um, and hopefully soon we will actually be able to found the alien nation. Also, I think no one has come to the defense of the Czechs. I think the Czechs are just going to be annexed into the European Union, and all of their Czechoslovak allies are just going to do nothing. I feel like there's a historical lesson there. Yep, okay, so it's, it's Munich Conference uh, 2.0. Uh, the European Union... Ooh, op centers, 109. Great, so the European Union continues to expand. I'll just let the mission phase end to determine whether or not I can finally build a bloody facility in Islamabad. I suspect the answer is no. No, more abductions it is. All right, I'm going to keep going. Uh, this is our campaign of selling out humanity. In the next episode, uh, it gets real. Uh, we start taking everyone's space infrastructure from them. We probably found the alien nation in Pakistan. And the grand hand-holding campaign to help the aliens win this war without them ever actually setting bloody foot on planet with an assault carrier uh, continues. Fantastic. Also, it's 2028 and we revealed our final objective, so go us. We've got the CP cap, so expansion is on the cards. Uh, Europe's expansion, obviously, but also if we're going to do majority population, I feel like India and Pakistan are good places for the alien nation to grow and expand. And then once that's done, cash probably needs to start getting abductions and whatnot chained in China hopefully so that the aliens can enthrall some of these control points later on. Now that I'm way under cap, they're likely to want to start enthralling. I'd like them to ultimately drift towards Beijing. I hope you're enjoying um, my pain and suffering. Uh, join me next time for more treason in Terra Invicta.